Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Pauline and today we are going to do some business English. We are going to talk about employment and common employment vocabulary. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing my screen because we're going to be using uh, our two class resources. Okay, so let's start uh, from the beginning. Okay, here we are, employment. Now, what is your job? How many different jobs have you had in your life? What was your first job? So you can answer the question in the comment section below. Now, employment vocabulary. So I think most of the times we have uh, about these words, apply, recruit, resign, retire, dismiss. Now, what is the meaning of apply? What is the meaning of uh, resign? What's the meaning of retire? What's the meaning of dismiss? Now, apply simply means to submit your application for a job or position. So I'm going to cross here. Recruit means to look for and hire personnel. So if you're looking for a job, you prepare your resume or your CV, and then you submit it, then you've applied for a job. And after that, the employee, the employer who gets your CV will recruit you. So recruit, look for and hire personnel now resign so when you're tired of working somewhere you can decide to resign you can choose to resign so if you choose to resign it means you have decided to stop working mm -hmm. where we here uh, leave employment because of each known so resign where is it Discharge from employment, file, let go, no. So resign means to leave and leave a job voluntarily. So you don't like working in this job anymore and you decide to resign. So you stop working there. Now retire. So when you become old, for some people, when they are 60 or 65, they can decide to retire or the, the, the country compels them to. So retire means to leave employment because of age. So when you're old, you go on retirement, you retire. Now, dismiss means discharge from employment, fire, or let go. So if your boss or your employer realizes that you do not meet their requirements or you're not hardworking, they can decide to fire you or they can decide to dismiss you. So discharge from employment, fire, or let go. And then we have this. So let's see how to use... Uh, prepositions in employment. Now complete with the correct preposition, then answer the question. At what age did you apply for your first job? Well, I applied for my first job when I was 21 and I worked as a shop assistant. Now, what is the retirement age for men in your country for women? Well, in my country, the retirement the retirement age for men and women is 60. Have you ever resigned from a job? Mm, not sure. So try to answer in the comment section. At what age did you apply for your first job? What, was the, what is the retirement age for men and women in your country? Have you ever resigned from a job? Then have you ever been dismissed from a job? Like, has your boss ever fired you? Have you ever received an email trying to recruit you for another job? Okay. Now, we also have some important vocabulary related to employment. Background. So when we talk about your background, we are talking about education, qualifications, and experience. Now, bonus. When we talk about bonus, additional payment to an employee as an incentive. So if you're hardworking, apart from your salary, you can get a bonus. You can get an additional payment for your services because you're hardworking as an incentive. An incentive is a motivator to boost you, to promote you, to encourage you to do, uh, to, to put in your best, to encourage you to, to work better. I think it's a great it's a great way to encourage employees. Now, promotion, when we talk about promotion, it means you are kind of, it has to do with growth, like an advancement in rank or position in the company. So you can have an advancement in rank, maybe from a junior analyst to a senior analyst, from a junior manager to a senior manager, that's a promotion. And now when we talk about personnel, personnel are just like employees, people who work for a firm or company. And now, Answer these questions. Do you usually receive a bonus at the end of the year? 
Yeah, so for some people, they have what we call the 13th month. They receive a bonus at the end of the year. And for some, co some companies offer these bonuses while others don't. So now tell me in your country, do you receive a bonus at the end of the year? Kindly tell me where you're watching from and write it in the comment section below. Now, when was the last time you received a promotion? So when was the last time you had an advancement in rank or position in your company? When was the last time you left from a lower position to a higher position in your company? Tell us in the comment section below. Now, do you get along with the personnel at your job? Now, get along means have a harmonious relationship or have a good relationship with the personnel. So do you have a good relationship with your coworkers or your colleagues at work? And now let's talk about benefits and pet perks so we can talk about employment without talking about benefits and perks now employers often offer full-time employees benefits such as health insurance retirement benefits and paid vacations some employers offer additional perks such as on-site gym additional unpaid time off free food tuition reimbursement free laptop now what is on-site gym so on-site simply means available at work, additional unpaid time off. So when you take your time off, your time off is paid, but if you decide to take extra time, it is not paid. That's why we have here additional unpaid time off. So you can decide to take an additional unpaid time off because you think you've not gotten enough rest and you believe you need more vacations. And the company can let you do that, but you won't get paid for that. Free food, those are some of the perks you get at work. Tuition reimbursement. Now, what is tuition reimbursement? Tuition is uh, money paid towards instructions. And our reimbursement is a refund you get from the company. So tuition reimbursement is uh, a refund on expenses directed towards studies. Let's say, for instance, you work for uh, Facebook and you decide to maybe enroll into a course. And if the course, let's say the course is, uh, let's say $1,000, the company can decide to give you an 80% reimbursement on the course. So if you pay like $1,000, the company can give you a refund of uh, $800. So that's uh, you, you've been refunded uh, by 80%. So tuition reimbursement, a refund on money spent towards expenses. So some companies do that. Some companies offer tuition reimbursement for degree programs, for master's programs. Like you enroll into a school and the school fees is uh, really expensive. And it's part of the company policy. They decide to pay maybe 80%, 60%, 50%, depending on the company. Now, other companies also offer free laptop. Now, if you have, if you have to read the perks above in order from the most impressive to the least impressive. Sorry, when we talk about most impressive, we talk about uh, the one that suits you the most, the most important to the least important. Well, I'll choose uh, for me the, the most Impressive would be tuition reimbursement. Second, the second will be on-site gym. And the third would be a free laptop. The fourth will be free food. And then the fifth will be additional unpaid time off. I don't know about you. Which one is the most important for you? Do you prefer to have a free food as the first free laptop, additional unpaid time off? Write it in the comment section below. Now let's continue. So here we are going to read about Google perks. Now, Googlers are people who work for Google. Now, on-site, as we said earlier, means available at work. Now, perks play an important role in attracting talented employees to Google. Google offers employees free gourmet foods and snacks available all day long. In its main office in San Francisco, Google has a bus that transports employees to and from work. Googlers are able to bring their pets to work. Employees have access to free fitness classes and gyms. They even have access to an on-site haircutter, doctor, laundromat, and masseuse. Googlers also have the option of extended time off to follow their passions and thousands of dollars annually in tuition reimbursement. Now, what is the laundromat? Laundromat is a coin-operated washing machine. And then a masseuse is a female massager, someone who massages you, a female massager. So we have masseuse for females and then masseur for males. Now, what do you think about the perks of Google employees? 
you can write your answer in the chat box. What is tuition reimbursement? We said it's a refund on money uh, spent towards expenses. Uh, like if you choose to study, uh, to go in for a degree in a school, or in a, in, if you choose to enroll into a course or to take a college degree, the, the company can give you 60% or 80% tuition reimbursement. On-site means available at work. Should more companies follow Google's example? Mm, although most employees would want more companies to follow Google's example, unfortunately, it's not possible because some companies cannot afford it. Okay, now let's talk about maternity and paternity leave. What is maternity leave and what is paternity leave? Now, in most countries around the world, paid maternity leave is guaranteed for working mothers and many countries also provide paternity leave for fathers, like time off after uh, delivery. If you're a woman and you put to bed, you can have maternity leave. Like for some countries it's three months, for some countries it's nine months, for other countries it's up to nine months, up to one or two years. Now, do you know the laws regarding maternity and paternity leave in your country? So in some countries, paternity leave does not exist. In others, three days, one week, two weeks. So tell me about your country. What are the laws regarding maternity and paternity leave in your country? Do you feel that the laws are appropriate? Do you think these laws are fair enough for men, for women? Write it in the comment section. Now, retirement age. Complete the paragraph with the verb in the passive form. Remember to use the form of to be plus the past participle. The retirement age is the age at, is the age at which a person is expected or required to stop working and may be entitled, oops, to government benefits as of 2015 the average retirement age in the world is 65 for males and 63.5 for females okay so that data is very old i don't know what it is as of 2021 so if anybody knows what that data is right now you can just write it in the comment section below and thank you now what is the retirement age in your country so tell me where you're watching from and tell me about the retirement age in your country. Okay. So can you guess which country has the youngest retirement age for men? Can you tell me in the comment section below? Can you guess which country has the oldest retirement age for men? From my findings, I heard it's Israel with 67. Men retire at 67 years of age. So I don't know how true that is. So can you verify and comment in the chat box below? Do you think it's fair for women to retire at a younger age than men? Why do you think that some countries have this policy? Okay, so in some countries, women retire at a younger age than men. And in some countries, men and women have the same retirement age, for example, in uh, Cameroon. Okay, let's talk about pension. Now, let's read this definition. A pension is a regular payment made during a person's retirement from an investment fund to which that person or their employer has contributed during their working life. So when you stop working, you receive a pension. So if you've worked for a certain number of years and you become old, you go in retirement, you receive a pension. Now, do you have pensions in your country? So kindly uh, comment in the chat box below. Which jobs offer the best pensions? Most people think politicians have the best pensions, but we politics, hmm. Okay, let's, <laughs> so you tell me in the chat box below. So is it bankers, medical doctors, accountants? Which jobs offer the best pension? Now we have unemployment. So unemployment, of course, when people are actively seeking work but unable to find a job. The unemployment rate is the percentage of unemployed people in the workforce. This number is typically between 4 and 12% in developed countries. Do you know the current unemployment rate in your country? So try to do some research. What is the unemployment rate in your country? Are you from Cameroon? Are you from Nigeria? Are you from Canada? So Google the unemployment rate in your country and comment in the chat box below. Now we have what we call unemployment benefits. So unemployment benefits are payment made by the government to unemployed people. I think so many countries don't know what we call unemployment benefits, especially third world countries. 
Now, unemployment benefits occur generally even only, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Unemployment benefits are generally given only dash unemployed people who have been laid off and are actively searching dash. So only which preposition goes here? Unemployment benefits are generally given only to unemployed people who have been laid off and are actively searching for a job. Now, what does it mean to be laid off? To be laid off simply means to be hired. Have you ever been laid off? Does your country provide unemployment benefits? Now, due to the pandemic, so many people have been laid off. So being laid off could be due to some crisis. So some companies couldn't afford to keep their employees due to the pandemic. And as a result, the employees were laid off. Some were laid off temporarily and some were laid off permanently. So they had to stop work and and they had to go back home because the company could no longer afford to pay them. And now we have uh, this. We we'll talk about severance package. Laid off, resigned, fired, wrongful dismissal. Now, what is a severance package? A severance package is a pay. Okay, a severance package is pay and benefits that an employee typically receives when he or she is laid off or retires from a company. So if you're laid off or if you retire from a company, that's if you're laid off, if you're fired, or if you retire from a company, you usually receive a certain amount of money. That amount of money you receive is called severance package. Sometimes they might be offered dash people who resign so which preposition do we put here so they might be offered to people who resign or are fired to prevent the employee from suing the employer for wrongful dismissal so in some countries if you fire someone and you don't give him a severance package he might sue you to court for wrongful dismissal or if someone is uh, goes on retirement and he doesn't receive a severance severance package, he might uh, complain about it. So most of the times, those who sue uh, companies to court are those who've been dismissed wrongfully. Now, what's the meaning of wrongful dismissal? So to be dismissed from your job means to be fired. Like the employer asks you to stop working, maybe due to misconduct or one reason or the other, it could be due to any other reason. Now, wrongful dismissal, is when your employer fires you for no good reason, like you're hardworking, you're punctual, you do your job as you ought to do it, but at the tail end, the employer tells you you're fired. Maybe he wants uh, his relative to take your position. Now, if you are dismissed wrongfully, it's your right to sue the employer to court, or the employer has to give you a severance package. So if he doesn't, you can sue him to court for wrongful dismissal. So that's very common in third world countries. No, sorry, not in third world countries, in developed countries. Job satisfaction. Now, job satisfaction describes how happy or content an individual is with his or her job. So there are many factors that influence job satisfaction, such as we have compensation, we have work-life balance, opportunities for advancement, challenges, job stability, job title, level of stress, relationship with managers, office, location. Now, can you classify these factors from the most impressive to the least impressive? Okay, let's say, for example, the most impressive factor for you is uh, work-life balance. Maybe the second one is compensation. When we talk about compensation, we are referring to the salary. Now, opportunities for advancement. Yep. Let's say three challenges for... Relationship with managers, five. Office location, six. Job stability, seven. Job title, eight. Level of stress, nine. Okay, this is my own classification. Now, can you classify yours in the chat box below? So which one is the most important for you? Is it compensation? Is it work-life balance? Is it uh, uh, job stability or the level of stress? So write in the comment section below. I want to see your classification so classify it from the most impressive to the least impressive now let's go to the next one giving notice now before you leave a job you should give notice typically it's expected to give two weeks notice 
So the employer has time to hire someone to fill your position and you can train the new employee. Mm -hmm. So if you want to resign from your job, giving notices like uh, giving your resignation letter. So before giving your re resignation letter, you need to uh, warn your employer in advance. Okay, not warn him, you need to tell him in advance so that he can make arrangements for someone who will take over from you. So in most countries, as we can see here, it's expected to give two weeks notice. But from my findings, some people say it depends on uh, how long you've been working in uh, a particular company. I, my, some of my Spanish students told me uh, if you've been working there for a long time, you need to give three months notice for some people, one month notice. Now tell me about yourself and your country. In your country, how much notice is expected when you leave a job? So write in the comment section below. Okay, going on strike. When employees go on strike, they stop working in order to protest something. Have you ever gone on strike? Which types of workers commonly go on strike in your country? So write in the comment section below. I know that teachers mostly go, go on strike. Teachers, doctors, and friends. We know about the gilet jaune. Mm. Okay, so is it common for workers to go on strike in your country? If yes, write in the comment section below. Which type of workers commonly go on strike? Uh, do we have, uh, is it nurses, doctors, teachers, uh, truck drivers? Write in the comment section below. Now we're gonna have a recap of all what we've seen so far. So we talked about promotion, reimbursement, retirement, colleagues, pensions. So we are going to fill in the gaps with these words. Now you should work for the government. The government employees receive high da, 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 after they retire. So, okay, write your answers in the chat box below. A few of my Dash and I participated in a conference last week in Boston. It's a good idea to plan for your Dash in advance. All employees receive a monthly blah, blah, blah for travel expenses. He has been working really hard. He deserves a... Hmm. Okay, so you have one minute to write your answer and let's check it together. You should work for the government. Government employees receive high dash after they retire. Now let's try to fill in the gaps. High promotion, no, you don't need a promotion when you retire. Reimbursement, no, retirement, no, colleagues, no, pensions. So government employees receive high pensions when they retire. Now, if you of my Dash and I participated in the conference last week in Boston, now let's test the answer. So you cannot say if you of my promotion and I know, if you of my reimbursement, no, if you of my retirement, no, if you of my colleagues, if you of my colleagues and I participated in a conference last week in Boston. Now it's a good idea to plan for your Dash in advance. What do you plan for in advance? You plan for your retirement, of course. So some people plan to go to the Caribbean when they retire or to go to one beautiful island when they retire. So what are your plans for retirement? Now, all employees receive a monthly dash for travel expenses. Uh, monthly reimbursement. So they get a refund from the company for their travel expenses which is quite good. Now, he has been working really hard. He deserves a, so when you work hard, of course you deserve a promotion. Deserves a promotion. Okay, very good. I trust you got it all right. Now let's look at this one. Tuition, strike, resignation, perks, bonus. So we talked about all this. We talked about tuition, we talked about strike, we talked about resignation, we talked about perks, and now bonus. I heard the company gives a large dash every year. Hmm, what could that be? He took a loan to pay for his university tuition. So I heard the company gives a large bonus every year. What is bonus? I'm sure you know. What are some of the dash at your job? What are some of the perks, incidental benefits? What are some of the benefits at your job? The teachers are going on strike again. Oh no. They think that they deserve more money. Okay. Peter announced his resignation. Yesterday, he will leave tonight. 
Okay, thank you for watching. Thank you for your keen and undivided attention. So kindly click on the subscribe button so that each time I upload a new content, you'll be the first to see it. Also click on the like button. Tell me from where you're watching from. So I'll be glad to receive any feedback from you. So write in the comment section. If you don't like the video, write in the comment section and tell me what you don't like so that next time I can improve. Thank you and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, bye, bye.